Peace and black power, peace and black power, peace and black power. Good Garvey Day. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism, Dr. Umar Ifatunde, King Kong Consciousness, Notorious RBG, Intercontinental Ifatunde, the most requested black scholar in the world, the most influential black school psychologist of all time, the number one orator so far of this century. Brothers and sisters, I want to do a quick video for parents because I'm seeing that a lot of our parents are falling for the trap and they're falling for the trap of the psychoacademic holocaust. So I want to briefly go over the psychoacademic holocaust for parents. Okay, the psychoacademic holocaust is a six stage system to destroy black masculinity in America. I'm going to say it again. The psychoacademic holocaust is a six stage system created by the European global power structure to destroy black masculinity. The six stages operate on all six continents. They operate against African boys and men wherever we live. And so I want to basically go through the six stages of death, which comprise the psychoacademic holocaust. Stage one is miseducation. And I want black parents to listen up. I want mothers and fathers to hear me well. Stage one, stage one is miseducation. Public school is deliberately designed. Public school is deliberately designed to disadvantage the black male child. I need you to understand this. I need you to understand this. I need you to understand, overstand, and understand me. Public school was designed to intentionally disadvantage the black male child. And the reason that public school was intentionally designed to disadvantage the black male child is to guarantee privilege, political and economic, for the white male child. I want to say this again. Public school for black boys must be broken. It is designed to be broken. Public school for the black male child must be dysfunctional because if it is not dysfunctional, then it will prepare the black boy to take power, economic and political, away from the white male child. White privilege can only persist. White privilege can only persist if the black child is not properly prepared to compete with his white male counterpart politically and economically. The schools must fail the black male child so he cannot compete equitably with the white male child. The only way you can safeguard white privilege is to make sure the black male is not prepared to compete. The deliberate intent of public school failure the deliberate intent of public school failure must be understood so we do not blame gangster rap. So we do not blame football and basketball. So we do not blame the corner boys and the drug dealers. So we do not blame the single black mother. So we do not blame the incarcerated black father. Even when the father's there. The six stages of the psychoacademic holocaust still operate. Even when the mother is there, the six stages of the psychoacademic holocaust will operate. Even if the child doesn't listen to gangster rap, the six stages of the psychoacademic holocaust will operate. Even if the young man doesn't want to be a football player or a basketball player, the six stages of the psychoacademic holocaust will still operate. They will still operate. So stop blaming the mother, the father. It's not even about poverty. Poverty may be a contributing factor, but poverty is not the cause. And one of the mistakes we make as American Africans, as American Africans, one of the mistakes that we make is we confuse causes with contributing agents, okay? 
The negative influence of gangster rap may be a contributing agent. Black boys being socialized to be athletes, which began from slavery, by the way, okay? Black men were valued only for their physical ability, never for their intellectual prowess. That goes back to August the 20th of 1619. That goes back to August the 20th of 1619. From August the 20th of 1619 to February the 8th of 2021, 420, 402 years later, the black man for 400 years, the black male has only been valued for his physical abilities, never for his intellectual, never for his intellectual. And although black men must be held accountable for socializing our boys to be athletes above and beyond leaders, although black males have to be held accountable for socializing our boys to be athletes above and beyond engineers and inventors and, and, and scientists, although black men have to be held accountable for socializing our boys towards physical action and not intellectual achievement, we must understand that that takes place within a context of white male domination that has always socialized the black male in terms of physical attributes. So the first stage is intentional miseducation. The first stage is intentional miseducation. And before I continue, Newport News, I will see you Saturday. Newport News, I will see you Saturday for the first time since 2013 or 2014, was it? Newport News, I haven't seen you six or seven years, but I will see you at the, at the Gladiator Boxing Gym. Okay, the Bo Gladiator, I believe it is, Boxing Gymnasium. Shout out to the brother who's letting Dr. Umar to come through. I will be speaking in Newport News at two o'clock sharp this Saturday. I will be speaking in Newport News, Virginia, two o'clock sharp this Saturday. I will speak before the book signing. I will speak before the book signing. Norfolk come through. Suffolk come through. Portsmouth come through. Hampton come through. Virginia Beach come through. We will be in Newport News, 2 o'clock until 8 o'clock this Saturday, February the 13th, at the Gladiator Boxing Gymnasium. If you need the flyer, you can text me. If you need the flyer, you can text me. If you need the flyer, you can text me. The next day, Frederick Douglass's Earth Day. Frederick Douglass's 203rd Earth Day, we will be in Gabriel Prosser City, Richmond, Virginia, at Charmaine Colors Studio. That will not be a lecture. That will only be book signing. Newport News will be a lecture. Richmond, Virginia will only be book signing. Newport News will be a lecture and book signing in Richmond, Virginia, will be only book signing good sister Charmaine come on out and support her and then Tulsa Oklahoma it is the centennial of Black Wall Street Tulsa Oklahoma next Friday February the 19th Tulsa Oklahoma Greenwood Cultural Center there's going to be a black history celebration there, and I will be speaking. I will be speaking in Newport News. I will be speaking in Tulsa. And then we go on to Louisville, Kentucky on Wednesday the 24th and Cincinnati, Ohio on Thursday the 25th. I will not be speaking at those but I will be meeting, greeting, talking, conversating, signing, taking pics. Louisville, it's been six years. Cincinnati, it's been six years. Newport News, it's been about six or seven years. Richmond, it's been a few years. And then Oakland, California on March the 6th. Oakland, California on March the 6th. Oakland, it's been a long time and I can't wait. I will be speaking in Oakland. I will be speaking in the birth town of the original Black Panther Party. I will also be coming to Camden, New Jersey at the La Unique Bookstore. Camden, New Jersey at the La Unique Bookstore. But let's get back to the message. So the first stage is miseducation. The second stage is special education. The second stage is special education. When the school... 
when the school cannot destroy the black male child with the miseducation, when the school cannot destroy the black male child with the miseducation, they move to the special education. They move to the special education. Now, this is where black parents become complicit in the psychoacademic holocaust. This is where black parents become complicit in the psychoacademic holocaust. Special education begins when the school gives you a permission to evaluate form. When they give you that piece of paper, when they give you that piece of paper asking your permission, when they give you that piece of paper asking your permission to have your child evaluated, you better think before you say yes. You better think twice before you say yes. I received the text message earlier today. I received the text message earlier today from a brother or sister in Rhode Island. I received the text message earlier today from a brother or sister in Rhode Island. The school wants them to evaluate, the preschool wants them, or the pediatrician wants them to evaluate their two-year-old for autism. The pediatrician or the early intervention service wants them to sign the paper to give consent for them to evaluate their two-year-old. I want y'all to listen to me right now. You cannot prove autism in a two-year-old. And if there's any psychologist who tells you you can definitively determine that a two-year-old is autistic is lying to you, and you can tell them I said it. And you can tell them I said it. I'm going to say it again. Anybody who tells you that they can evaluate a two-year-old and definitively confirm that they are autistic is a liar. They are a liar. I've been evaluating children for a quarter of a century. I've been evaluating children for almost a quarter of a century. You cannot prove that a two-year-old is retarded. You can't prove a two-year-old is emotionally disturbed. You can't prove a two-year-old is autistic. You can't prove a two-year-old is intellectually disabled or ADHD or conduct disorder or none of that. So you need to stop letting people manipulate you into giving permission for your children to be evaluated at two Three, four, five, six, seven, and you need to be careful with eight, nine, or ten. I'm going to say it again. You should not be given permission for a psychological evaluation for a two, three, four, five, six, or seven-year-old, and you better be careful with eight, nine, or ten. I'm going to say it one more time. If somebody comes to you saying they want to evaluate your two, three, four, five, six, or seven-year-old African son or daughter, you had better think twice. And if the child is eight, nine, or ten, you better proceed with caution. Let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. And I speak with authority because I am an expert in this field. I speak with authority because I am an expert in this field. I'm not some whole tepper some conscious coon on YouTube making videos, giving their opinions. I have expertise in this. Six degrees. I know my science. I know psychology. I know education. I know political science. I know school administration. So I speak with authority. This is not an opinion. I'm giving you authority on this topic. Don't you let nobody evaluate your two, three, four, five, six, seven year old. Deafness and blindness, they might can confirm that. Traumatic brain injury, they might can confirm that. Orthopedic impairment, they might can confirm that. You can't confirm no learning disability at two, three, four, five, six, and seven. You can't confirm no ADHD. Ain't no daddy at home disorder. I said, ain't no daddy at home disorder. I said, ain't no daddy at home disorder. You can't confirm that at two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Autism. You can't confirm, brother. 
I'm very humble, Sister Pamela Anderson. Are you an African, Sister Pamela Anderson? No disrespect, but my messages are for the African community and for those non-Africans who are trying to help children from the African community. So if you are a white teacher who is here to learn to help, that's fine. If you are a white mother who had a child with the snow bunny crisis survivor, that's okay because you're trying to help your African child. But if you're not an African, or if you're not helping African children, I'm going to respectfully ask that you hop off the live right now. I will give you 60 seconds to do that. Somebody said you can confirm a learning disability as young as the time of learning. You are totally incorrect. You are totally incorrect. And I will not debate you because you don't have my expertise. You don't have my credentials. You don't have my experience. You don't have my background. So I will not debate you. In the words of the great Dr. John Henry Clark, one of the last of the revolutionary pan-African nationalists, he said, I only debate my equals, all others I teach. I only debate my equals, all others I teach. So you can't debate me. Have you ever evaluated a child in your life? Have you ever given an intellectual assessment? Have you ever given an autistic assessment? Have you ever given an academic battery? Have you ever developed a positive behavior plan? Have you ever conducted a functional behavioral analysis? Have you ever helped standardize a major intellectual assessment or academic battery? Of course you haven't. Me and you are not on the same levels. It's levels to this shit. It's levels to this. You and I are not on the same level. It's levels to this. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Let's make history. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Let's make history. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Let's make history by getting the Honorable Marcus Garvey Elementary School renovated in time for the first annual unapologetically African Family First Festival, the UA Triple F. I said the UA Triple F, the unapologetically African Family First Festival, the UA Triple F. Sister Pamela Anderson, I can't tell if you are an Africoid or a Caucasoid. So I was simply seeking clarity. If you are Africoid, you are part of the family. You're still not allowed to be cooning during my live because you will be blocked. I throw block parties every live. I throw block parties with music and snacks and everything you want. So Africans can be on the live, but you're still not allowed to coon because you will be cut off. And if you are non-African, you are still welcome if you work with African children, okay? This is a personal, private, African family forum. This is a personal and private African family forum, okay? No disrespect. I don't believe in disrespecting people. I'm not going to disrespect the Chinese, the Arabs, the East Indians, the Latinos, the Mexicans, the Jews. I'm not going to disrespect anybody because I don't think I have to be disrespectful in order to stay focused on my agenda. I just want to make it clear to you that every ethnic community in America is allowed to spend time alone. European Jews spend time alone. Chinese spend time alone. Arabs spend time alone. Mexicans spend time alone. Non-African Latinos spend time alone. And we as Africans in America reserve the right to have a forum that is exclusively composed of our own kinsmen and kinswomen so we can discuss issues that are relevant to us. And it is very arrogant for any Caucasian to feel that you have a right 
to interject yourself within a African family meeting. I would never go into a white church and think I got a right to be there. I have a right to be there. I would never disrespect another culture's space. And because I would never disrespect another culture's space, I'm asking that the cultures respect our space. I don't have to disrespect you. I'm just asking you to be respectful of our space. Okay? So, we talked about miseducation. Special education is a trap. And what they're doing right now with the COVID online remote learning, you would think that since the kids are at home, you would think that since the kids are at home, they would slow down the special ed referrals. You would think that since the kids are at home learning, they would slow down the special ed referrals. But guess what, brothers and sisters? They are still asking our parents to get their children evaluated for special education. Why are you asking black parents permission to get their children evaluated during a COVID shut in homebound instruction crisis? All the kids are at home. Some are going back to school. Some are going back to school, but most of them are still at home or they have a hybrid model. A lot of our kids have a hybrid model where they go to school two days and they home three days or they go to school two days and they home three or school three, home two. But my point is, since March of last year, for almost 12 months, next month will be 12 months. Next month will be one full year. Next month will be one full year that our children have been learning at home. Why are you asking permission? Why are you asking permission for our children who are learning at home to be tested for special ed? It doesn't make any sense. Are you going to come to the house and give them special ed? No. Are you going to come to the house and give them special ed? No. So if you're not going to come to the house and give them special ed, if you're not going to come to the house and give them special ed, what is the purpose of getting them tested for special ed if you're not going to be delivering any services in the home? What is the use of getting them tested for special ed if you are not going to be delivering any services in the home. The purpose is to get that money. The purpose is to get that money. The purpose is to get that money. And guess what? One of the reasons they're bringing the kids back to school, one of the reasons they're bringing the kids back to school is so they can test them and get that money. Another reason they're bringing the kids back to school is they don't want parents to get so comfortable with homebound instruction that they never send the kids back to school, which means the state is going to start laying off white teachers and the unions don't want the state to start laying off white teachers so if you don't want the state to start laying off white teachers you got to bring them kids back and if you want that special ed money you got to bring them kids back so you can test them and make the money i'm just giving you the truth you can debate opinion you cannot debate truth you can debate opinion. You cannot debate truth. Truth, you either accept it or you refuse it. But you can't debate the truth. You cannot debate the gospel of Ifa Tunde. The gospel of Ifa Tunde is the most undebatable philosophy that exists. It is Garveyism for the 21st century. The philosophy of Dr. Umar Ifa Tunde Ogun Tade. Is Garveyism for the 21st century. This is the only flag that will be flown at FDMG. Of course, we're required to have an American flag on campus. That's school law. I don't know if y'all know that, but you must have the American flag inside of every school in the United States. 
So let's go to stage number three. So number one is miseducation. Number two is special education. Number three, psychiatric medication. Ritalin, Adderall, Concerta, Metadate, Cycler, Prozac, Paxil, dope, crack. It ain't nothing but synthesized cocaine and you giving your children crack so they can get a cracked up education. I don't understand this. Why does a child need medication to receive a miseducation? Why does a child need medication to receive a miseducation? Why does your child need medication to receive a miseducation? And what you also better understand Nothing wrong with speech therapy. I see nothing wrong with speech therapy for a two-year-old or a three-year-old. I have no problem with speech therapy for a two-year-old or a three-year-old. But a speech problem is obvious. Speech problem, you can see it, you can hear it. A speech problem is obvious. A learning disability ain't obvious. What is obvious is that lazy-ass child. A reading disability ain't obvious, but what is obvious are your lazy ass children. See, you don't want me to evaluate those little lazy baby coons. See, you're raising lazy baby coons. You're not going to come with no child at me, five, six, and seven, talking about he got reading problems. No, he got Facebook problems and Twitter problems. Your daughter ain't got no math problems. She got TikTok problems and Instagram problems and internet problems and cable TV problems and Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion problems. Shout out to Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion. I love both of my sisters. Hit the cash app. All my rappers, hit the cash app. Sean Carter, hit the cash app. Beyonce, hit the cash app. Ice Cube, hit the cash app. Dr. Dre, hit the cash app. Queen Latifah, new, I saw you on the show last night. Shout out to the queen. Hit the cash app. All black celebrities, hit the cash app for the school. Dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the cash app. But let's get back to this. Your daughter is lazy. She ain't got a math problem. She got better things to do. Your son is lazy. He don't have a... See, that's why at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey RBG International Leadership Academy for Pan-African Excellence. Black Excellence. I can't wait for your son to tell me he can't read. I can't wait for your nephew to tell me he can't read. I can't wait for your little brother to tell me he can't do math. I can't wait for your godson to tell me he don't know how to count. Because guess what? At the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey RBG International Leadership Academy for Pan-African Excellence, there will be weak in academy for the learning disabled. There will be weak in academy for the learning disabled. Oh, you can't read? No problem. I'll see you Saturday and Sunday until you know how. You can't count? No problem. I'll see you Saturday and Sunday until you learn how. You don't know how to write your name? No problem. I'll see you Saturday and Sunday until you learn how to know how. You can't sit still? You can't control your emotions? No problem. We will see you Saturday and Sunday until you know how brothers and sisters I'm going to break the psychological chains of the ma'afa I'm going to break the chain that is around your son's brain my job is to perform psychosurgery on the next generation of African males my job is to perform psychosurgery on the next generation of African males we will train them we will empower them we will lead them until they get to the point where the words I can't will never again be uttered from their mouth. The school that we are building has never been built nowhere on this planet in modern history, but we are going to do it in Delaware. 
30 minutes from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm going to unite black Delaware with black Pennsylvania. I'm going to unite black Wilmington with black Philadelphia. Hashtag 30215. I said hashtag 30215. I said hashtag 30215. See, Harriet Tubman broke these chains. Frederick Douglass broke these chains. Henry Highland Garnett broke these chains. Our ancestors in the Civil War, they broke these chains. Nat Turner broke these chains. Gabriel Prosser broke these chains. Denmark Vesey broke these chains, brothers and sisters. I won't be breaking them with the fists. I will be breaking them with the mind. The purpose of FDMG is to destroy the psychological chains that continue to bind the consciousness of the African. Don't put your child on medication. Don't put your child on medication because if the school finds out that your child has been prescribed medication and you choose not to give your child the medication, they will send in Child Protective Services and Child Protective Services will take all of your children out of the home. It's called medical neglect. Child Protective Services will take all of your children out of the home. It's called Child Protective Services. You will lose your children playing around with ADHD. You will lose your children playing around with conduct disorder. You will lose your children playing around with emotional disturbance. You will lose your children playing around with oppositional defiant disorder, brothers and sisters. Leave the drugs alone. The only drug you need is the good gospel of Garveyism. That's all you need. The only drug you need is the good gospel of Garvey. That's all you need, brothers and sisters. We have to come together and finish the work that the most excellent, right, honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey engaged in to build a global government for African people, brothers and sisters. Independence or extermination is what Mr. Garvey said. The only solution to the problems that face the African globally is a unified global political and economic empowerment system. Nationalism. It must be nationalism. Pan-African nationalism that knows no skin tone that knows no religion, that knows no language, that knows no cultural chauvinism. It is Africans everywhere united as one family, regardless of your religion, regardless of your language, regardless of your nationality. One race, one people in one family. I said the dream of Kwame Nkrumah, the dream of Patrice Lumumba, the dream of Thomas Sankara, the dream of Robert Robert Sabukwe, the dream of Henry Holland Garnett, the dream of El Haj Malik El Shabbat, the dream of Bishop Henry McNeil Turner, the dream of Alexander Crummel, the dream of Edward Wilmot Blyden, the dream of Robert Campbell, the dream of Sekou Toure, the dream of Julius Nyberg, the dream of William Ferris, the dream of John Edward Bruce, and I can be here all night speaking about the Pan-Africanist because I am one. I am the seal of the great Pan-Africanist. Miseducation, special education, psychiatric medication. Number four, juvenile incarceration. Number four, juvenile incarceration. Number four, juvenile incarceration, brothers and sisters. They lock our kids up. They kick them out of school. They put them in twilight programs. They put them in the juvie hall. We have to stop that.
And the way we stop that is by creating our own system of education. If you do not create your own system of education for your own children, if we do not take responsibility for the education of African children, we will lose all of them to the prison system. If we do not take control of our children's academic destiny, we will lose every black boy to the mass incarceration system. This year must be a turning point for African people. This year must be a psychological, spiritual, political, economic, and cultural rebirth for African people because if we leave 2021 the same way we came in it, we are in trouble. Tomorrow is not guaranteed to the African. I don't care what religion you believe, tomorrow is not guaranteed to you. And if your religion is telling you that you have a future, no matter how disorganized you are, and if your religion is telling you you're going to be all right, no matter how messed up and dysfunctional you are, and if your religion is telling you as long as you accept Abraham or Jesus or Muhammad or Moses, you will be all right, then your religion is your enemy. Any religion that teaches you to depend upon another race is a religion that will enslave you. Any religion that teaches you to depend on your oppressor for your liberation is an enemy to you. The only religion I have is the religion of revolutionary pan-African nationalism. The religion must speak to the needs of the people or throw it into the ash can of history. So says Dr. John Henry Clark, the religion must be a solution for your issues as African people. And if it is not, it is useless. No colorblind religion can save a people who suffer because of their color. No colorblind religion will save a people who suffer because of their color. I have no issue with the church or the mosque. I have an issue with Africans who keep on trying to deny the reality that only we can save ourselves. Juvenile detention. And then after juvenile intentionary incarceration, stage five, emotional frustration. He'd been miseducated. He'd been special educated. He'd been medicated. He'd been juvenile incarcerated. And now he's emotionally frustrated. He's mad. He's angry. He got a gun. He's smoking weed, cigarettes. He getting drunk. He having irresponsible sex. He cursing out his mother. He disrespecting his father. He running with the gangs, running with the corner boys. Emotional frustration. When you go out in the streets of America and you go out in the streets of the, Euro of the United Kingdom and the the streets of France and you go out into the streets of Canada and the streets of Jamaica and the streets of Africa and you see all of our teenage boys hanging around angry and frustrated and disrespectful it's because they've been abused y'all they've been traumatized by public education they've been traumatized by special education they've been traumatized by psychiatric medication they wasn't born angry they wasn't born disrespectful they wasn't born violent and hopeless that is a natural reaction to the trauma of the psychoacademic holocaust and that takes us to stage six stage six is premature extermination stage six is premature extermination stage six is premature extermination that's when a black man is murdered by the police by the white racists or by each other. Black on black crime is a outcome. It is a logical, mathematical, and political outcome of black boys who are put through this psychoacademic holocaust. And the reason we are working to build the reason we are working to build the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey RBG International Leadership Academy for Black Excellence is we want to destroy the psychoacademic holocaust. We want to eliminate the miseducation machine. Stop talking separation until you have independence. Stop talking separation 
until you have independence. Once you create your own independent communities, once you have your own independent infrastructure, black people will naturally separate. But to talk separation before you have independence is to put the carriage before the horse. You can't put the carriage before the horse. You have to have independence before you can have separation. As long as we got to go to their hospital, don't talk to me about no separation. As long as we got to go to their supermarket, don't talk to me about separation. As long as our children got to go to their schools, don't talk to me about separation. As long as our men got to go and beg them for jobs, don't talk to me about separation. Independence will automatically create the separation you feel that you need. But to talk separation and you ain't building institutions for black people is a total contradiction and I would call it hypocrisy. It is a total contradiction and I would call it hypocrisy. Brothers and sisters, donate to the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy because we must break the chains that remain. We must break the chains that remain. Get on your cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Get on your cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Get on your cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Get on your PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG academy. Get on your PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG academy. Mail your check or money order payable to the FDMG academy. P.O. Box 9634 Wilmington, Delaware. P.O. Box 9634 Wilmington, Delaware. P.O. Box 9634 Wilmington, Delaware. 19809. I see Brother J. O. Goon is back. I thought I blocked you, J. O. Goon. J. O. Goon, because I renamed you J. O. Coon. So how did you get back, brother? I'm going to give you a second chance. Somehow, J. O. Goon. Y'all remember a couple months ago, we renamed J. Ogun, J. Ogun. I'm going to give him a second chance though, brother. But you cannot wear the name Ogun. You cannot wear the name of my Orisha father acting like a coon. I am a son of Ogun. Ogun is my ruling Orisha along with Orun Mila. You cannot come on my live acting like a coon, brothers and sisters. For the black parents who have children in special ed, if you are a black parent who has children in special ed, if you are a black parent who has children in special ed, I'm going to be starting a black parent special ed network WhatsApp group. Black parent special ed network WhatsApp group. Black parent special ed network WhatsApp group. It's going to cost you $9.99 per month. We have to raise money for the programs. $9.99 per month. I put you in a WhatsApp group. I will be sending y'all resources. I will be answering your questions around the clock. Other parents will be able to lend you some support who have been through the same situation. It is a Black Parent Special Ed Network. You will not have to pay the $75 consultation fee anymore. You will not have to pay the $75 consultation fee anymore. You will just sign up for the automatic $9.99 a month Black Parent Special Ed Support Network WhatsApp chat. If you're interested in joining the Black Special Ed Parents Support Network, you can text me for the link. It will also be on my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you want to sign up for the Dr. Papa podcast, we've had 25 episodes. We pushing up to 50 episodes. Text me for the link. It's also on my Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook for Sisters Only Podcast. If you want the For Sisters Only Podcast group, you can text me for the link or so my Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. I'm working on the college tour. I'm working on the college tour. We're postponing the Nat Turner weekend camp retreat for black men. We're still going to do it. We're just pushing it back. It will be invitation only. We're not going to advertise because we don't want any coons. We don't want any coons joining us at Nat Turner land. Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters. I don't have to do it for free. 
I've given out so much for free that it's okay for me to charge, brother. You know how many parents I've helped for nothing over the past 25 years? So I can charge because I am building institutions and alternatives for our people. You pay money to everybody else. You pay money for everything else. You pay money to everybody else. You pay money to everything else. And if you want my expertise, if you want my help, if you want my wisdom, you will pay for it. Not for me to live off of it, but I have programs and institutions that I am building. If you don't like it, you are always free to leave. Newport News, Virginia, this Saturday, November the 13th, 2 until 8, I will be speaking. Richmond, Virginia, this Sunday, 2 until 8, book signing. Tulsa, Oklahoma, next Friday, the 19th, I will be speaking. Greenwood Cultural Center, Black Wall Street, Centennial, 1921 to 2021. Black Wall Street, Centennial, Oklahoma, 1921 to 2021. Louisville, Kentucky, Wednesday, February 24th. Cincinnati, Ohio, Thursday, February 25th. Book signings only. Oakland, California, Saturday, March the 6th. I will be speaking. And we are bringing black. The Black Parent Boot Camps, brothers and sisters. I'm ready to reignite the Black Parent Boot Camp Tour. If you have a space that can seat 50 parents with social distancing from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m., reach out to me to reschedule the Black Parent Boot Camp. If you have a space that can seat 50 parents from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. with the social distancing, please reach out to me, 215-989-9858, 215-989-9858, Dr. Umar Johnson at yahoo.com, D-R-U-M-A-R Johnson at yahoo.com. Get your unapologetically African apparel at drumarjohnson.com. Thank you, Sister Cindy Renee. Thank you, Sister Cindy Renee. Thank you, Sister Cindy Renee. They pay $9.99 for Netflix. They pay $9.99 for Netflix. They pay $9.99 a month for Netflix, but can't pay $9.99 a month to make sure they can get all their questions answered about their children. And you don't have to be a special ed parent to join the Black Special Ed Parent Support Network. Because if you are a parent of a black child, sooner or later, they're going to try to trap them up and you got to know what to do. If you're the parent of a black special, of a black regular ed child, sooner or later, they're going to try to trap them up and you got to know what to do. So regular parent, special parent. Netflix went up to $14.99, brother Christopher Ramsey. Netflix went up to $14.99 a month. Netflix is now $14.99. <laughs> So if you can pay $14.99 for Netflix, if you can pay $14.99 for Netflix, Julius Jones said Netflix is $17.99. Tamika Ma'ati Ma Ma said Netflix is $15.99. Which one of y'all is telling the truth? Is Netflix $14.99? Is Netflix $9.99? Is Netflix $17.99? Is Netflix $15.99? But whatever Netflix is, it costs more than $9.99. Nicole Sloan said $17.99. So listen, brothers and sisters, if you can pay $20 for Netflix, you ain't got $9.99 for your child. Because every time you have a problem, you can put your question in the WhatsApp group. Every time you have a problem, you can put your question in the WhatsApp group or you can send it to Dr. Umar privately through WhatsApp because I'm going to save your name and I'm going to know who is and who is not a paying member in the special ed support network. And you can send me a question all day long, all day long for $9.99 a month. 
Instead of prepaid legal, it's prepaid special ed advocacy. Instead of prepaid legal, it's prepaid special ed advocacy. Instead of prepaid legal, it's prepaid special ed advocacy. Or you can keep paying that $75 every time you need a consult. The choice is yours. The choice is absolutely yours, brothers and sisters. We are going to start taping again for the shockumentary. We are going to start taping again for the shockumentary, brothers and sisters. We're working on the shockumentary, okay? So that's going to be coming out. We hope to have the shockumentary ready when we have the first annual Unapologetically African Family First Festival. I want to have it late August of this year. We want to celebrate the opening of the Nat Turner Jean Jacques Dessalines Gymnasium, the Honorable Marcus Garvey Elementary School. We want to celebrate the opening, the ribbon cutting, the ribbon cutting ceremony for the Marcus Garvey Elementary School this summer. And we will start school next summer. That is the plan, brothers and sisters. That is the plan. It is Pan-Africanism a parish. It is everyone or no one. If you need to reach me, get at me, donate to the school. Help us get this money for this HVAC. Help us get this money for this plumbing. Let us finish the job, brothers and sisters. I'm also looking for a black company who can come in and redesign the Nat Turner Gymnasium floor. I want to give the Nat Turner Gymnasium floor a facelift. So I need a company that can print a big logo in the middle of the gym floor. I need a company that can print the big FDMG logo on the wall. So if you know anybody who has the ability, okay, to relay the gym floor, not the floor, but peel up the old yellow and put down the new red, black, and green basketball court color and put the logo in the middle of the floor and put it on the wall. I'm trying to keep it all black, brothers and sisters. If you know a black-owned door company, black-owned door and windows, black-owned door and windows company, we need a black-owned door and windows company. Reach out to me. Black-owned door and window. Black-owned cameras and security intrusion. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism signing off. Peace and black power.